Okay, today we're going to be making something called the Cable of Death. Um, a lot of folks are really afraid of this, and in certain situations it's really not a good idea. Uh, if you're a general RVer, um, or you know, uh, anytime you're needing to use a generator uh, in parallel with another one, uh, parallel cords seem to really mystify folks. Uh, most of the uh, Honda style generators have uh, banana plugs uh, with a shrouded connector which prevents uh, you, you from creating a what's called a dead man's plug um, and basically what that means is uh, this I'm, I'm, I'm finishing making it now and as you can see I've got one of the uh, connectors is not finished um, but what you end up with is two of these male connectors um, and this is a 50 amp plug now granted I'm not going to be able to supply 50 amps with the generators that I have but this allows me to not have to have any other adapters so uh, and this is, still, this is still safe and protected other than the fact that if if you don't follow the directions and you have one of these unplugged um, this end will be hot when the generator is connected on the one that's unplugged um, as best I can tell I'm gonna do this and I feel perfectly safe doing this um, you know to each his own you know use your own judgment um, but I know that a lot of manufacturers are doing this now um, I noticed the Westinghouse and a couple others are doing it and basically what they're doing is they're putting a, a switch uh, most of them are also GFCI if you ever watch uh, one of the GFCI demos I remember back in the old days the uh, salesman would actually but you know uh, purposefully expose himself to a, a, a shock if the GFI didn't work um, but they basically will go in the center of the uh, connection and, and add a switch so that you can turn off one of the legs. Well, there's a really easy solution for that. If, if, you're, if you're making a poor man's version of this, um, you know, I, this entire cable, I've got less than 20 bucks in it. Um, I think the cheapest one that I could find on Amazon was around 80 to 100 bucks. Um, and it didn't have the 50 amp plug that I wanted. Uh, so, you know, this is uh to me is an acceptable thing uh, a lot of folks too ask the question you know can i parallel two three four five generators together well sure you can um, basically the inverter that's actually in the generator uh, if it's designed for parallel use is going to look at the sine wave uh, of the output of the generator that's already there the set of generators that's already there and it's going to do its best to match it um, and uh, i've had no problems i've never done anything more than four um, but there's no, potentially no reason for, uh, you know, piling together as many generators as you want to pile together. Um, you know, again, this, this particular cable here, uh, this is a 50 amp to two, uh, 15 amp, um, one tens. Um, a lot of people have questions about this. Everything in my RV, uh, is one ten. So basically I'm in this cable, what's actually in here? is everything's tied together and these two hots are tied to the hot line of this so that's where I'm actually able to supply somewhere around 30 amps um, to this 50 amp plug which will run everything in my RV um, again I'm making this one for the PowerMate uh, generators uh, I'll try to put a link up in the video uh, for that review um, and I'm, I'll probably do a review later of you know both of them together or I may add it to this video um, but I, I did buy another one so you know it's getting hot um, I want to be using the air conditioning uh, and I needed this to be able to run my air conditioner a small you know 1600 watt continuous 2000 peak generator won't run a, I don't recommend running a 13.5 and it certainly won't run my 15,000 uh, that's in my in my unit um, so we'll get to this we're gonna finish this and do a test. I'm going to show you real quick how to test to make sure that this is all connected. Um, big worries, you know, it should be really simple. If you're using standard extension cord, it's basically green to green, which is your ground, uh, white to white, which is your neutral, and the black is typically your hot. Um, depending on what kind of connector you put, this is a standard thing. You know, this is purchased at Lowe's. Um, I believe it doesn't show the brand on it but this is a 1450r uh, 50 amp connector uh, most of these that you buy commercially are 30 amps which are fine and i've got a 30 amp adapter i just 
it, these are basically cost the same amount of money um, so it's actually quicker just to put it all in one uh, for my particular application but on these these are really simple you've basically got a ground connection and a neutral um, and you have two hots so basically you want your hots that are here attached together to the hots that are here not separate so basically you have two hots here and you want to actually tie these hots together and connect both hots so that both of them are connected here if you actually do uh, two separate ones you'll end up with two phases you'll end up with two phases more than likely the issue is is they will not be connected together so that's not what that's not what you want to do so the special thing on this on this 240 plug um, is to actually not only tie these two hots together so they're the same face um, but also to tie both of the uh, the hots that are coming from this side to your rail here so basically what this looks like inside is you have a wire that goes from the hot to the hot and then you have both hots coming in and con contacting that same wire so it basically forms a bus between these two hots here I hope that helps we're gonna get to finishing this up and we'll go do a test Okay, we got our cable of death going and air conditioners on I got the TV on and a couple other things inside and uh, obviously it's charging the battery as well um, as you kind of see here in my particular unit I've got a 50 amp service uh, so it was just a lot easier to actually uh, use the uh, 50 amp plug one in parallel um, I'm going to go over this again without the gins on, but I just wanted to mention, basically what you don't want to do here is come up and unplug one of these cables while these generators are running. Shut both generators down before you make any changes. Uh, we'll just go inside here and use some appliances. Uh, both of those gins right now are running uh, in economy mode. And it doesn't have any problem starting the AC unit in economy mode and ramping up to speed. So really, once you crank them, you really don't have to go back out and mess with them until they run out of fuel. Um, I've got my, my ACs running. Um, I've got TV going. I am powering the uh, refrigerator off of uh, those two gen sets outside. And as you can see, um, I can start the microwave without any ill effects. Uh, so that's pretty much full load. I can I can pretty much use anything in the RV uh, with just two of those gins. Uh, they did have an Onan option. Um, the Onans that I that I looked at it for this trailer, it, um, they're relatively loud. I, I can't even hear the gins from the inside. I can hear the AC unit in here. Um, you know in the TV but I can't hear them outside and I've got them directly right in front of the bedroom which is not typically where I run them I recommend recommend that you get your generators as far away from your RV as possible uh, to keep any fumes from getting in the uh, in the unit can't really think of anything else to turn on that's pretty much a full electrical load um, other than the water heater, and I'm going to go try it here in just a sec. Um, I'm not going to leave it on very long because uh, my water heater is not actually completely full. check make sure that I have water and water heater a good way to do that is just let a little bit bleed out from your um, your valve excuse me um, as long as you've got water in the water heater it's safe to turn on okay we've got the water heater on 
And we can still start the microwave. Okay, everything works. Um, just one thing I wanted to say, this isn't some kind of magic, uh, you know, where you just kind of try it. Uh, just calculate up what wattage your, your appliances use. Uh, in my particular case, I'm, I'm about 300 watts under what I can con continuously supply for all of my appliances running. Starting, I can't start everything at the exact same time. If I had uh, all of my appliances on and I went out and I unplugged the 50 amp cord and plugged it back in, uh, it would be an overload condition because everything would be trying to start at the same time. So, you know, with a little bit of care and caution, um, you can actually get your AC unit running, leave everything else off, get it going good, you know, start up your fridge, let it cool and finish its cycle. Because basically what you want to do is you don't want that sudden surge current. You want everything to kind of be smoothed out. Um, so just, you know, slowly ramp up your uh, stuff as you turn it on. And you can get by with two small 2,000 watt generators. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to be comfortable. I mean, I want to have AC. Um, I can pretty much, when I, once I get the AC going, uh, I can use my appliances at will um, without, you know, a real big concern about being overloaded. Um, now, now, granted, uh, fuel, I, I'm thinking I'm going to get just a few hours uh, at this load, uh, and I'm going to be running two gins, so it's going to burn some fuel. Um, you know, that's the advantage of having a toy hauler is, you know, you've got a, uh, uh, a fuel fuel pump in the back of the unit. Uh, my particular unit holds 30 gallons, um, so I, I'm going to be set for a weekend. Um, one reason that my particular toy hauler, and, and I'll have to revisit this, and I may, that, that's the reason I mentioned the parallel generators, um, more than paralleling two, but actually paralleling three or four, is here, um, I actually have a spot for another AC unit. Um, this, this has a 50 amp service in it. It's designed to support a second unit. Um, I haven't had any real issues other than the fact that, you know, air really doesn't come back here. It's not that I use this a whole lot. Um, you know, but if I had a, a larger group of people that came with me or something, uh, I may need to keep this cool. I don't, I don't really foresee it happening because typically around here at night, um, I typically, typically stay around the Western North Carolina mountains uh, and Tennessee. Uh, and typically at night, it's not too bad. Uh, the AC unit's going to be able to keep it down cool. Uh, my particular unit in my bedroom has a, uh, you know, a vent, so, I, so it distributes air really well. From this main unit okay I'm gonna get all this shut down and we'll go out and take a look at the cord again with the gins off okay we're at it to two gin sets and it's pretty much that simple you basically plug both of these in both generators are off and ready to be cranked um, one thing that I'll say you know this is kind of a on the power mate thing and I'll put another link to that video um, in this but originally I bought one of these now I have two um, this economy mode you'll actually want to set that to off when you initially crank them uh, you know sometimes I like uh, I'll I'll leave this unplugged and I'll actually crank both units up and let them warm up before I actually do this parallel because it does take a little bit of energy um, to get these things synced up it seems and sometimes they don't want to really crank really well uh, if, if they're cold or what have you uh, I've noticed that they definitely will not, the, the second one will not crank or the first one won't crank. Um, if you don't have this economy mode turned off, uh, a lot of times it'll have trouble getting going and started. Um, but in this one, I've already got them warm and basically all you need to do is turn it to run. Fire up the first generator. Be sure that both plugs are plugged in. You don't want to be firing up a generator um, with only one of the plugs plugged in. Basically what you're looking for is that once this turns green and it's up and running at full speed, uh, you can turn on the second gen. Make sure that your economy mode is off. Give it a pull. It'll start, go through the cycle and it'll actually sync up. And now you're at full power. Um, after they're running you can actually 
turn down into economy mode and, and do what you need. Uh, the shutdown is really important. Make sure that you don't unplug one of these cords while they're running. And that's either unit. So you're actually going to want to turn both units off. And once they're done, you can unplug it. Um, in a pinch, and you know, again, I, you know, there's no need to, to post a bunch of nasty comments. I, I'm, I'm well aware that um, this is, uh, if this were unplugged and that gener and the generator next to you is running, uh, plugged in, this is going to be hot. There's no question doubt about it. Um, you know, it's it's all about what you feel comfortable doing and, and kind of what you want to have invested. Um, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, if you've ever used these, uh, these are on every multimeter. Uh, these Bantam Jacks, um, you know, by themselves, I really don't have a problem with them other than, you know, they're really easy to break off. Um, but I, I don't like having to connect this ground up every time. And, you know, making sure that you have a good solid ground connection, um, you know, with the way things work, uh, these generators get moved around, that screw loosens up, and you don't have a ground. Um, this is positive connecting. And, and, you know, I used a big, heavy-duty industrial cord. Um, I use nice connectors, and this fits in there really well. This is not something that is going to accidentally unplug. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm tugging on it. And it's, it's, it's something you, that if, more than likely, if you actually hit the cable that hard, even if this was a parallel cord over the Bantam jack, you run the risk of pulling you know, the wire out of the Bantam um, or coming in contact with the hot anyway. So I don't view this as any less unsafe. Um, you know, if I had small kids or something, uh, you know, you may want to explain to them how this works and what to stay away from. Um, but uh, I noticed a lot of the commercial manufacturers are, are doing just this here. Uh, like I say, you know, $20 investment and I've already got my adapter. Um, I do have a plan. Um, you can buy dummy female to put over this cord. Um, if you you know want to add a little bit extra add a little bit extra safety or maybe you just want to run one gen and not have to have another adapter um because that's exactly what i'm going to do I, you know when i went to lowe's I, it happened on accident i grabbed two of these i thought and one of them was a female cord so i'm just going to use it to actually cap over top of this um to protect it and uh you know that i've got a plug a grommet a solid grommet that i can put in the end of this to keep anybody from sticking their fingers down in there um, but that'll be my, you know, if I, if I only run it on one gen, I can just run over, uh, to one gen, cap this in, and still, you know, have my adapter. Um, it'll just save me some time. Anyway, I hope you liked the videos. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Um, and, uh, if anybody builds a, uh, uh, three-prong version of this for three generators or four generators, uh, I'd like to know what your experience is. I have not actually done that with these. Obviously, I only have two of them, but... I have done it with the Hondas and it works just fine. Um, thanks for watching.